All right, so in my last video, I kind of talked about finding the period of the tangent and cotangent function. And what we figured out was the period of the tangent and cotangent function is pi. So what we need to do is now is kind of determine, you know, how do we find the initial period, kind of the start and the end of our, of our graph. So let's just uh, take a look here at, um, let's take a look at the two graphs and see how they're going to be uh, change, how they're going to be similar and different from each other. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of graph the cotangent function and the tangent function. And what I'm going to do is just kind of show the initial period of, the, our, of our parent graph. So by looking at the parent graph of the cotangent function, what we notice that the cotangent function, we said has an initial period of pi, crosses at pi halves, and is going to kind of show this shape here. Then we look at the tangent function and kind of get a little rough idea. The tangent function has two asymptotes on its initial period, which is at pi halves and negative pi halves, and it crosses at 0. So what we're going to do is now remember these graphs repeat over and over and over again, right? You can go infinitely to the right, infinitely to the left, and just repeating the same graph over and over. But what we're concerned about is the initial period, the parent graph, when there's no transformation of the graph. And what we want to do when graphing, we always want to kind of start somewhere, right? Because since it infinitely goes left and right, you got to say, all right, well, where am I going to start? So we call that kind of part the initial period. So when looking at the initial period of cotangent, we can say that the start of the initial period is when x equals 0, and the end is when x equals pi. For tangent, we look at the, the start is not at 0, but the initial period, this graph starts at negative pi halves. So you can say x equals negative pi divided by 2, and then the end is at x equals pi halves. Now, why is the initial period going to be helpful? Well, when determining kind of the phase shifts, it's important because once you know, once you can kind of set up, when, once you set up what the initial period is, your transformations, what you're going to do is, when we look at the cotangent function, what you're going to do is take, um, take what's inside your function and set it equal to your start and your end values. So for this paragraph, I just have x. But when we look at the standard form of our graph, when I have d plus a times cotangent of bx minus c, what you're going to do is you're going to take bx minus c, if there's any transformations, and then my mic falls off. If there's any transformations, and what you're doing is set that equal to 0 and pi, because that's your initial period. Then once you get that initial period, you can just keep on repeating periods in the positive and negative direction. The same thing with cotangent. I can rewrite the same you know, standard form, but just um, input tangent in there. And what you're going to do for any transformation, whatever's inside your function, you're going to set that equal to negative pi halves and pi halves. And that's just going to tell you, you know, where you're going to start. Where, are, where is your first asymptote and your second asymptote? Then what you can do is just continuously repeat those two initial periods. But we always want to start with an initial period. And for cotangent and tangent, our initial periods are right up here. Then once you get your transformations, you set them equal to the start and the ends, and you solve for x, and that's going to be your new asymptotes. So there you go. There's the initial periods of tangent and cotangent. Thanks.